Hi, my name is Joanna Henley. I'm an artist, illustrator and art director and also the founder of Misled Studio. I'm here today to talk you through my work, my inspiration and how I work digitally using the new Intuos Wacom tablet. Welcome to my home. This is a really good example of how I like to work in various different layers. So that works traditionally and digitally. For this piece, it started as a A3 drawing and then projected lines onto the large card using various different textural marks with paint and watercolor and even colored pencil and ink. It gives this really nice, strong, layered effect. It all happened really fast because it's a live piece that was created for an exhibition opening. So I think the reason I love it is because it has this amazing chaos. There's lots of dripping paint and lots of colors smudging and bleeding into each other. And it's been really hard to recreate this in my studio. So we're in my studio now, and here are two pieces that are directly influenced by Bittersweet, so they were created a little later, and they're a really good example of merging traditional and digital artwork. So I'm gonna use one of the software programs available with the Wacom Intuos tablet called Clip Studio Paint. So you can work with Clip Studio Paint really simply. So I've clipped my workspace, which you can go to via window, and I've put it into illustration. So this software, you can make uh, your artwork into animation, and also you have the perspective frames to do comic work as well. But I'm just gonna do sort of basic layer illustration work all strictly with the Intuos tablet. So I've kept this as clear as possible. So there's a lot of this stuff that you can kind of get rid of. So I've just kept the layers here, my tools here, and um, something that I always do with my pen is I'll go to system preferences and I will change the settings on my stylus. So with this one, I like to have the pen for the first click is I put that set on, go to keystroke and I put that as space. So that means I can constantly move around or move my canvas around. And then my second right click is then set to brushes. So if I move the piece, you'll be able to see my original drawing here. So if I've got this, I can move around, which is really handy when you're zooming in. So I use, I like to use the keyboard as little as possible. And then if I wanna change my brush size, I can do that. So with this piece, I've used this with a digital brush and I've only used the brushes within the software. So this relies on a really small brush, so it's lots of time and lots of very, very small cross hatching. And for this part, you can see it looks really detailed and it has that nice organic feel of using a pencil. So if I press right click, I can enhance the size of the brush and decrease here. So as I said, I want to use this as simply as possible, like as if I'm drawing on paper. Okay, so I'm gonna show you all the different layers that I've used on this sketch. This is a live project that I'm working on at the moment. 
This is a commissioned piece for a final artwork that will reach bigger than bittersweet downstairs so it's going to be a really huge piece so for me to do this as a drawing being able to enlarge that and printing that or working on that so big will be will be quite difficult if i scan that in i'd have to scan it in as a really high resolution so it's really nice actually for this piece to find the right brushes and the right texture to have that kind of digital format and I know that I have uh, a lot of scope for enlarging it. So even though you've got a really light and for what I'm used to very simplistic pencil tool it has such a lovely feel it works so lovely on the tablet and you still have this lovely pressure sensitivity if you zoom in got this really really nice so I'm just using the brushes that are integrated in the software so I haven't imported anything and I'm not using anything complex I just want to use what the basic tools are and this rough pencil is really really lovely it's got beautiful texture and it flows really nicely on this matte finish Wacom tablet so if I tend to use this pencil, organic pencil feel in black and then to give it sort of graphite feel because obviously when you're working with a 2B or HP pencil it's never really black. The only black you'll get is ink or if you're scanning something in. So for me to get that sort of really organic graphite feel I normally start the layer and then bring the opacity down and that's really easy to do on this program so if you start a new layer so you can see that I'm using the rough pencil in black but then if I bring the opacity down a bit you've got this feel which is a bit more grayscale which is which is what you want and if you want to darken it so if you're saying you're doing hair and this pressure sensitivity is really nice because you can go thick to thin quite quite well so if I go backwards a bit and then if I want to have areas that I'm outlining so it's got that sort of characterized feel I can then add another layer using the same color so if I add one here and then I have the opacity only slightly reduced then I've got this darker feel so it looks like it's, it's kind of heavily rendered without having to do multitude of, of layers here so you can see that in the work here where it's a lot darker around the pupil and then lighter around here so it's all about having those contrasts that will make your piece acknowledge light and dark but also make your piece look really strong so I'm not going to talk about how to draw the face um, I'm going to talk more about how I colour and how I use the Clip Studio Paint software. So let's just delete or hide this recent layer and then we have this layer here where we want to also hide. So read these bits and these are the background piece so let's get so we've got so I'm going to get rid of my pencil lines by just going backwards really the only thing is with this you have to literally tap every time you want to go back which can get a bit tedious so what I like to do is just sort of scribble a bit, make marks around as I'm doing. 
sort of play around with the brush, play around with different mark making and expressions, and then maybe what I'll find and what I enjoy using, then I'll bring into the piece. So there'll be lots of kind of scribbles and sketches up here. So this is on my background layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the eraser. Well, actually, I could flip this round by changing the black into the white using X, and then I can cover that with a larger tool using this. And then, so I'm in the paint tool now, and because I've got this handy little preset here, I can just change the brush size, clean that up as new, and then if we flip that back. Okay, great. So with these pieces here, I have different layers set here. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so my lines for my figure piece, for my portrait so far is a little light so what I've done is I've duplicated the layer so I've just added the same layer again so you can see once I put that on that's a, a lot more striking again if it's too much I can just bring the opacity down and I can really play with that so I've got those two layers there to start with and you can see the other pieces that I've involved here so these are the first sketch versions which I have on the layers. So this is how I start with my colored pieces. So I've decided with this piece that I want to keep the first character or the main character to look as if it's pencil drawn and I want it to be surrounded by color. So enhancing that, that kind of feel and having that contrast. So the way that I start with colour is I start with a layer and I just use any brush really and just put like a free form lines. So with that I've started with a pink and then on top I'll add another layer and then I'll start putting some finer lines. So let's just turn that one off so I can show you one that's a little bit further developed. So with this one, we have this piece down here. So you can see here that this is a combination of different stages of line work. So we've got the green kept on that layer, so I can still play with the opacity. I've got this layer which is a separate colour as well. And we've got the colour for the background. So this can be, this can disappear. So this is like my first sketch. So it's almost like you're working on a light box. So you start with your framework, reduce the line work, and then you can t work on top and then have that final piece. So. Right, so what's really great here is you've got your eyedropper. So let's let's do a little bit of this. So we eye drop that colour and then we're going to use the pencil and then I'm going to show you how lovely it is to draw with. And I'm using rough pencil again. Um, so with the blue flower moving up to the layer above, which is this green. So I'm calling this green because obviously it's a brighter green. And then the bigger your brush size, the better you get this, this feel of diversity of line and line quality. So you can have these lovely little flick outs that go really small and then nice thick lines here. And I think I want to go a little bit darker, so I'm going to move out here. See, so you're acknowledging your first line, your first sketch, then you can improve on that as your piece develops. 
because the way that I like to work is I work around the piece so a little bit at a time so I'm not working on one section and realizing that it doesn't really fit with the flow of the piece because the lines are really important here for me so I want them to acknowledge the face so it's coming around the face like this and this is bringing around here to the face also so you'll be able to see this with the other organic shapes that have been added here so we've got a purple flower as well and this is all digital brush which is amazing so just using colors no kind of charcoal graphite sort of feel here it's all color and then these are really nice layers so I started with a lilac and then to just bring in the shadow I'm using a darker purple that's really really easy to do and the feel and flow of the tablet just it just really it really makes it easy and it's just really enjoyable tablet to sketch with so as I'm using a tiny screen we're zooming in and out a lot so you can slowly see the piece in its entirety and we've got the yellow flower as well so with this piece again I've used a layer below to make the sketch point and then I've added this uh, different colored layers so the orange is one layer the yellow is another layer and then the green on another so I know that if I want to change those colors then that's really easy and talking about changing color and changing layers something that's really nice with this tool is with this software is so if I just have one of these layers open for the character which is called I've, I've just called that woman so if you go to this tool here this spot window here you can see layer properties and that's got this little blue box here so if I click that that changes that should change my line work so let's see you can see this is changing all the lines in that group to this really lovely turquoise blue and I like to use colored pencil a lot and this to me is really exciting because it's really easy to do and you can either go backwards like so or you can just click in here and that will change so it's a really really easy tool to use and another one which is great especially when you're doing portrait because you have to acknowledge the symmetry of a face but also a face can look really really perfectly set but there's something that you can't quite put your finger on and there's a really nice tool here that allows you to flip the workspace if i go to view and rotate invert and then hit flip horizontal I get a different perspective of it so sometimes I'll take a photo of my work or I'll flip it to kind of understand the piece a bit more so I can see that there's definitely more shadow on this side and less here and you can see the, the lips here a little less visible so I'm gonna flip this back and put it on reset rotate so I'm going to create a new layer and just show you how easy it is to colour and just just basically add add a bit more depth to, to the work. So I'm just going to enlarge. And I'm just going to use the ink brush here. So I quite like the uneven layering brush of course so let's just test this over here 
So if we want to use a similar sort of green, but I want to have that green a bit more sort of bluey turquoise. I'll have it here. So let's see what that looks like. That's quite nice. And then I want to bring my brush size down. So and I'm slowly adding colour as if I would with a pencil. So really small strokes rather than just filling really dense flat thick color it's really nice to build it up because you have to think like you're drawing if you want that organic feel and you're just constantly layering on top it's a slow process but it's it's really worth it and then you can go smaller if you want to have more sort of defined line but we're using a layering brush here now anyway so I definitely want to use another color here so let's do the other eye so let's bring the brush size up first I'm using really small strokes. And I really want to add some depth to this colour. So I'm going to start another layer. And I'm going to keep this colour here, but I'm going to bring it tonally darker. And then with a smaller brush size, start bringing that shadow. Because when you have the top of the eyes, they have that. You have to acknowledge that you'll get a shadow from the eyelashes and the eyelid. So we're just emphasizing that with the color and going a little bit smaller so you give it sort of more three-dimensional feel okay so you can see these lines starting to look you can see the lines actually and I mean, it's starting to look a little bit digital so I'm gonna go and use this tool here which is the blending so you're going to experiment with that a little bit smaller and I'm going to just smudge those colours a little bit. So the trick with having this feel is layering, as I keep saying. So I'm just going to smudge this. So this is almost like your base colour. So it's fine, it's quite sort of poster box, paint box green because we can we can always bring this colour down in opacity and introduce other colours on top. So maybe using a different colour but not too far away we can start putting sharper lines and see what happens there. So I'm going back into rough pencil. Actually, let's do colored pencil. And I'm going to make these. Blend this sort of yellowy green now to happen here. So I'm always making like a stun sun formation here. So I'm going around the pupil and then with the blender, just slightly blend that in and even tapping and then bring that up, bring that down. 
And I think I want to have a bit more range with this depth here, so I'm going to add another layer again and go a lot darker. So I'm going to keep to that sort of, keep to a similar colour, but bring it a lot darker. See what happens here. So it's a more sage green. I'm going to use pencil here. So here we go. Just keep it just to those, to the edge here, top here, and the same here. Okay, so we've got our shadows in. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Um, I'm going to add more black. To define the pupil to give it more contrast here so it's definitely a lot lighter here and then we're going to add the highlights to just finish these off on another layer again and let's use that and we can flip this either using X or touching that so we've got colored pencil with white And if you have the white layer above, then you'll really see it. Let's have this a bit denser. And then you want that white layer over the pencil layer, so let's pop that up there. You can see that difference here. We actually want to take that down a bit, so I'm going to use the eraser. So you don't want it that dense. So let's go to pencil again do something textured so we've got there we go that sort of softening here which makes a real difference and then obviously with your highlights they need to be pretty similar from the left to the right so I'm not labeling any of my layers just because I'm doing a walkthrough and it would just get a bit tedious but it's advisable to know where your layers are and get into a good habit of making sure that you're labeling them or it just gets really confusing. Right, so I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I'm gonna do a couple of, you can see these lines that I've added already which I'm going to acknowledge here with a thin but soft brush it's good when you're doing details to zoom in as much as possible and down here so you get the idea so you could either have these as the top layer I think my brush size is quite big so again, you're looking at these features and when you're colouring and also when you're rendering, it's really important or making even your first marks to understand where your highlights, where your mid-tones and where your shadows are. So where your lines are going to be darker where they're going to be thicker, where they're going to be more layered, and where you want to have that lightness. I'm just adding here. So we could do what we've just done with the cheeks and bring that shading by, uh, by blending that. And then underneath, we have a darker, more solid tone. So again, I'm only having these lines in the middle where 
the lips meet. Blending. So then if you've got a smaller brush you can see that it's bringing these lines up so it's going from a shaded to a line, a really soft line and this is really cool for the lips or flowers or any kind of piece that you decide really so you can see this so it's again a process where you need to be patient and just play around Again, underneath, maybe we want to have a little bit here as well. A bit up here, so it's nice to have it on the edge because you can always delete these bits at the end. That's a very big eraser. Blending again. So this could be your base. I mean, depending on what tools you use and what effect you want, maybe you feel that this has got the starting point of doing something really organic. It might have a sort of more digital feel. You can add on. Uh, you can add sort of pastel marks. So as I said before, I try not to use too much keyboard when I'm working. I really like to have the movement and the pen and brush size. I like to do most of it on the tablet. If you do want to use quick keys, then you can find all the quick keys in just below the preferences, which is the shortcut settings and you'll see all the different letters. So you've got the brush, which is B, and then it will click between the watercolor, the opaque, all the different watercolor brushes, and so on. Uh, pencil is P, easy to remember. Pen, P, gradient, G, and so on. And you can actually change these if you want. So that's really handy and really simple. So it's all outlined there. It's been really nice to share my process with you and just to show you how simple it is, just using digital brushes, pencils, blending, smudging, and just the difference it makes through having those various layers. And it's just a really lovely process to work with. So thank you for watching. I hope you check out my channels to see how the work develops because I'm looking forward to sharing it with you and I'd really love for you to be inspired to do a piece of your own. Get in touch and we'd love to share it.